It's March Mania at Sports Interaction. Wow. NHL, NBA, March Madness, MLB, so much more. It's Bananas. B-A-N-A-N-A-S. That was good spelling. Thank you. Play Pinata Picks and Minute Madness exclusive games with insane odds you can't play anywhere else. Make your next bet at Sports Interaction. Download the app in Ontario. Use the QR code at the bottom of the screen. Or head to sportsinteraction.com slash STPN to get started. It's 19 plus. Please play responsibly. I took far more from the Leafs beating uh, another top team in the standings like fairly handily um, than I did from the next night where the Sens kind of caved them in, Mm -hmm. but the Leafs uh, pulled off the win anyway. Um, Huge win. Huge win in Carolina. Or against Carolina. Well, I I think, you know, obviously there's always the um, the fact that the Carolina Hurricanes are ahead of them in the standings, or at least were. Are. Um, And the fact that Carolina should be, and they're rarely talked about because there's bigger markets that are taking up the oxygen like the New York Rangers. But the Carolina Hurricanes are a perennial, they should probably get to the Eastern Conference favorite. They, and and each, each year, it's the second round and out. It's, they have a lot of similarities with Colorado. Um, Colorado was second round and out. And then they finally got over the hump last year. So if I'm Carolina, I try to take some lessons from that. Washington was that team for a long time, too. So teams do get out of this purgatory. What do you like about the way the Leafs played in the 5-2 is a pretty significant win. Yeah. Um, there was some, there was production from lower in the lineup. Fourth line got the first goal of the game. Uh, I think it was Achari mm-hmm. and then he got hurt because of course, by the way, he has no, uh, the Leafs are saying he did not sustain a concussion. He was oh, just held out God. of the lineup just because. Yeah. Well, okay, great. Mm-hmm. Good. Um, then they get, uh, their top right winger going up against the Hurricanes top right winger, or at least top scorer in, uh, Marty Nietzsche's mm-hmm. and just burning them, making them look like an absolute pylon. And then the third goal was a little bit of luck Mm -hmm. Um, because sometimes you put yourself in a position to succeed. You put yourself in a position to have a puck go off. Yeah. And uh, they did. And they got a little bit of goaltending. The defense was nice. Luke Shen with that big hit on Ajo. Yeah. Give me a little bit more of that. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Uh, It was just a, like a complete win. Um, You're, Listen, you're probably not going to run the Hurricanes out of the building, and they didn't, but they were, I thought, the better team for the vast majority of the game. Sam Sadoff um, went on, I think it was IR the next day, because and Wool came up because Sam Sadoff's wife, I believe, is either giving birth or has given birth to a child. Yeah, they said- Which is crazy. That's crazy timing for them. That's a lot, it's a lot mid-hockey oh, season for, her, for them, so wish them the best. They, they said it was a little combination of he's battling some things, and- uh, his wife is about to give birth. They just started a five game road trip mm-hmm. or we're going to after this Carolina thing. Um, so yeah, man, take as much time as you need. Take so, the week. So you go back to back with travel, but it's, you know, it's, it's a, it's an, an hour flight. It's manageable travel. Manageable. It's still a pain in the ass. And so you're going to Ottawa and you're playing the Sens the next night. The reason I think it was a key matchup for the Leafs is because it was a character matchup. You're going on Second half of a back-to-back against the team that regularly embarrasses the Leafs. Yes, uh, in Ottawa. And it was, I mean, maybe Sheldon Keefe's greatest challenge all season. um, Because you went with the Slurpee lineup, 7-Eleven. And then you play the final 40 minutes with 10 forwards. Because Achari's out. Like, half the lineup played like career highs. Mm -hmm. Right? And then uh, you're forced to go with this weird Franken lineup of 12, six, you have four guys who didn't play the night before, including your goalie. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, he had to do a lot of managing of that bench that I think the (laughs) Sens killed the Leafs in terms of shots on goals, uh, or on goal because, uh, that line, that, that lineup to me wasn't built to thrive. No, I mean, it it, was built to survive. yeah, it was built to like, let's just get through this. Let's that was not the Leafs it. presenting their best. No, they they won. They won, but it wasn't them presenting their best lineup. No, I couldn't believe it. And like, of the 52 shots Matt Murray faced, he made some great saves, but like, it never really felt like he was getting hung out. I did think he was positionally sound, and I thought the Leafs defense was at least clearing rebounds most of the time. 
And there were a lot. Yes. Well, they're at 52 shots. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's, it's been a bit of a problem this season, the, the rebound control, whether it's Murray or Samsonov in net, but they've done a much better job of, uh, clearing them and, and maybe the new strategy, cause I know their numbers haven't looked great recently. Um, maybe this team is evolving into a team that gives up a little bit, uh, more shots than they used to, but fewer scoring chances, ideally. Okay. Ideal. But still, okay. We're fifth, we're, we're, um, 30 minutes into the game and there was 30 shots against. It was bad. You can't do that. Well, that, that I think a lot is, uh, is the Sens doing, um, and the Leafs didn't meet them, which, which I thought was interesting. The Sens were just as good offensively as they are just as good defensively. Sorry. As they were offensively, they didn't give the Leafs any time, any space. They were skating them uh, into the ice. And I think DJ Smith and the Sens hope was that the Leafs would try to keep up with them and tire themselves out. So they'd be softened up and the Sens could beat them in the later half of the game. Leafs didn't do that. Mm -hmm. Now it resulted in them getting outshot into oblivion, but they actually kind of got better as the night went. I thought. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. And I want to say, good game for Matt Murray. Positionally sound. Mm -hmm. uh, he even knocked the post off. That's how you know he's on fire. Oh, yeah. And the ref um, gave him a little talking to. Yeah, but he's he he needed, especially after that Edmonton game where he clearly was not in it from the start, even though they won. That, to me, is like, okay, that's a good backup. That's a good backup performance. He's that's the backup. Yeah, he's, listen, he's over pit. Sure. Uh, I don't think, but does it, like anyone care at 4 million? Is anybody that bothered by it? It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. And so now he's on this weird streak of consecutive games, giving up uh, four goals or more. I, I didn't see anyone bring that stat up though. Wow. Well, cause not all four games are equal. That's right. <laughs> yeah. He, he faced a shitload of rubber. He did in that one. And like the goals too. Like the the, the se second goal where it was like it, the the deflection. That was the first one. Oh, that was the first one. That was the first. So it goes off a of Goche's <laughs> skate. I've never seen someone like donkey kick it with their heel, have it go up and over the goalie, mm -hmm. and then the game tying goal. I think it was. It was one of Brady Kachuk's goals. Uh, was the the goal that I always allow in Chell, where I crouch block, and I'm like, yes, I did good defensively, and the puck goes straight to another guy. So, and yeah. like, so Murray's out of position for that. Um, and McCabe gives it away, but neither is their fault. I got a couple questions about overtime in the shootout. Okay. Guys, these are Sheldon Keefe questions. If Sheldon were here, I'd be asking him this. Okay. Why it, why are you starting overtime when you have overwhelming talent compared to the senators? As it's not, that's not a, a I'm not trashing the senators. The Leafs are seven years into this development program, the Senators are probably two or three, mm -hmm. right? The, the Leafs have far and away the best firepower of the two teams, despite what Senators Twitter thought last summer. And I am just curious as to why gaining possession off the start in overtime is not important to the Toronto Maple Leafs. Why are you starting Kampf, Marner, Lilligren? Because Kampf, they think, is their best chance of getting the puck. Yeah. Right? Um, and, but also Matthews so, is over 50% on a, on a, on a, on, a, on his face-offs. So I do think that's fair. That's fair to point out that the Leafs are one of the best face-off teams. In the All league, of them are good at it. And they shouldn't be worried about sending anyone out there. They, they should be able to send Matthews, Tavares, Camp, even Lafferty. Um, yeah, yeah, should, he was good. They should be able to send out there. They, they shouldn't be, uh, O'Reilly if they really wanted to, they, they shouldn't be afraid of sending anybody out there. But I, I think what's interesting about the Leafs in overtime is they don't care about the pace. Um, I think the strategy used to just be throw your three fastest guys out there, followed by the next three fastest guys. They don't care about pace. The Leafs like to play it nice and slow now in overtime, and they've had to completely change their strategy because... I well, they're not fast anymore either. No, the Leafs are not a fast team. Not overwhelmingly, but like I saw that their record on the season in overtime was six and seven, which is miraculous because they started, I think, one and six. Yes. Yeah. So, which means they're doing really good recently. So, this whole thing of starting camp 
and either two defensemen or it, it doesn't matter. I think they've settled on Camp Lilligren Marner. It's worked. It's worked. And we were on the phone for the first one. That was the night I broke my nose. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, were, so, but, we were on the phone but for here's, the first one. Here's the thing with that is it didn't work. It did not work uh, against the Senators. Season. Because what happened was Ottawa gained possession and the Leafs couldn't get it back. Yeah, but no, the other, they were wasterful. The other way didn't work for the beginning portion of the season. Like, I know, we've but seen I would just Matthews, a, Marner, Riley a million times to start the Well, year. we can slow the pace but still have the more talented players out there. I, there's no, to me, there's no excuse. I don't, I don't. To have those, guys, not got, you put Matthews out there to start overtime. End of story. Yeah, but they did that and then it didn't work. And then it became a running gag that you were like, they could start anybody else. And then they did that and it's been working. So why would you go away from what's working when they did what you tried and it didn't work? I also Because think they were trying to go, it was the pacing that was the issue, right? They the were trying way, to go too fast. I think the way that overtime went was by design. By the way, and it wasn't that they were too fast. It's wh what happens with speed when you're going north, south, north, south, north, south. If you're going you as fast as you, not just exhausted, but you go as fast as you can north, you turn it over, and it's that much harder to stop and go the other way, which the Leafs kept getting caught, kept giving up two and three on ones and two on O's and breakaways and everything. Mm -hmm. So instead of doing that, they've slowed the entire pace down. So when their guys do get caught out there, Camp was caught out there for a long shift. Lilligren was caught out there for a long shift. Matthews was caught out there for a long shift. Tavares was caught out there for a long shift. What they do is, yeah, those guys are tired. They're not as tired as they might have been. And they're also not giving up the rush chances that they were. Because even though the Sens were managing the puck really well, they still weren't getting what they wanted. Right. And the Leafs weren't getting anything either. No, and then you're going to a shootout rely. where the Leafs are terrible. Yes. Well, they won. <laughs> they did have to rely on one really good save from Murray, if I remember correct. Okay. And that's fair. And over time, you're going to expect that. Then I, then we get to the shootout. And I, I'm, 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 I'm picking at Sheldon Keefe here because, uh, because sometimes, you know, when, you're, uh, when you love somebody, they're the, they're the one you're the hardest on. Okay? So we go into overtime. <laughs> he starts rightly with William Neeland. Yep. And then he goes... Sorry, this is a shootout. Nylander, and then it goes Matthews, yep. and then it goes Marner. Nylander, Matthews, convert. Marner goes next. So then the rules, if, if I interpreted them the, the right way, is that you can put out anybody. If you're tied after the third round no. of shootout. No, no, no. That's you international. So, yeah, so what, do you, can't what is the rule? Out. No one can come back No, out. no, you get, one, you get one go. So if it goes through the entire team, you can't do anybody. It, no. Then, yes. So, so I bring this game up all the time, but because it's... It's unprecedented. So I was at a 21 round shootout when I worked for the Mississauga Steelheads. Okay. And both oh, goalies were standing on their brain. I think Spencer Martin. Might oh, have, yeah. I okay, think, I think cool. he might have been the goalie for the Steelheads. Can't remember the other one. It was against London, though. And um, shooter 18 goes for both teams and they don't score. And everyone in the building goes, uh, goalies? We oh, wanted the goalies to go. That would have been cool. But, but like, we're all sitting there like, <clears throat> who goes next? Mm -hmm. And the answer was the first shooter. Yeah, you're back up to the top. It's baseball lineup, you know? You're back to one. Yeah, so the one, the one thing I, we didn't, I think, get confirmation on is if once you have to go back through the lineup, are you allowed to change the order? If I remember that shootout correctly, they didn't. So they had shooters one, two, and three uh -huh. for... for both teams and then shooters 19 20 and 21 were shooters one two and three so here's a question then when i go to a hockey game and i have to sit through a shootout which i'm liking less and less do i want to see a shootout goal from justin hall <laughs> or do i want to see a shootout goal from the guy i want a jersey by which no. is matthews what Marner, and Hall Lander. jersey There's, unless I i'm see, unless I i'm his dad unless i'm his dad i don't own a hall jersey and, and, and it's nothing against Justin Hall specifically in this instance and nothing against Alex Kerfoot's goal. I saw a lot of people going, you know, putting like, this changes nothing. Like, uh, <laughs> like to me, like, I'm happy, but I'm still mad at you. Um, you know, it's, it's great that he scored and that's awesome. But I didn't come here to see Alex Kerfoot. I didn't spend $300 on a Leafs ticket to see Alex Kerfoot take a shootout goal. I want three guys. Bobby McMahon? Well, Bobby McMahon would have been a good story. Yeah. And he, he, he almost got a couple, eh? 
Yeah. He was close. Oh man, I really like that. But player. I just I feel like you should be able to just roll your stars out there. That's my point. In the Af- after three, yeah. like go to international. Don't you think? Rules? Or no? Am I wrong? I think it's fine. I think roll, it's fine. Roll the stars, guys. We gotta we gotta build these guys up a little bit. I think the biggest problem with the shootout is it's not overtime. Yeah, that's the biggest problem I had with it. CJ was talking about that last week. Did you guys catch that discussion? Yeah, the GM meetings thing. Yeah, where it was they were looking at it going to seven minutes, and just do it. And well, just but, do okay. It. So here's what will happen though: if you do that, then teams are just gonna they're just gonna dead puck it. They're no, just they're gonna not. pass it around the back. That's why they're only adding two minutes. That's why they're only adding two minutes. Come on. A, a lot of people forget that. Over time, it used to be five on five, and then it was four on four, and yeah. then it was three on three. Like, they've made edits to this, and it's only gotten better. So, why wouldn't we continue to make edits and make it better? Well, I, 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 I'm cool with that. But what I think will motivate them, this two minutes isn't going to motivate you to, to play any harder. You know, you have sudden death over time. How about death over time? As in, if it's a tie at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the fourth period, nobody gets a point. No, they've already... Oh, now that would fire you the fuck up. Both teams. You skated lose? for 60 minutes and nobody gets a point. If you don't win overtime, you're going to try to win overtime. That is a fascinating concept. I'm not the one that came up with it, but I am going to pump those tires until it happens. You know what? Worst case scenario happens just because you suggested it. So here's what's going to happen. The second wildcard team is going to go up against the team beneath them. <laughs>